pick them, clip them, and light them, boys. Deadwood Tobacco's about to blow some smoke. Introducing the lineup for tonight. Your pretty boy and host, the always handsome Piers. The freestyle and visionary of Deadwood Tobacco, Wild Bill. Fresh off the boat and quick with his smoke. Introducing Stash. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Deadwood Tobacco Company Blow and Smoke Podcast. Thanks for coming back and saying hi to us again. Uh, I am the forever handsome Pierce. Right here, I've got my uh, oh, formidable uh, boss. Formidable? Formidable? Formidable. The boss. The boss. Why? There we go. The boss. <laughs> this camera is weird. The camera or the microphone? The camera, because it's all centered to the microphone. Now the microphone's really loose. Oh, good. Okay. So it's gotcha. like a bad symbiotic relationship going on. <laughs> and that's Bill in a nutshell. Over here, I've got Mr. Stash. Squid. What up, Tony? How's it going today, guys? Yeah, doing good, doing good. Doing good. All right, today we are going to be talking to you about the culture and etiquette of cigars. We've got a little bit of stuff here ready for you. Um, basically what we're going to do is you walk into our, I mean, just kind of picture you walking into our establishment and, uh, the experience that you're going to get from front door to the human door, to the cash register, to the beer, to the out. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about first cutting and lighting and the different kind of variations that you can do in that. I feel like it's a pretty personal thing. Stash, what do you see most of? Uh, most of what I'm going to see now for anybody that's, uh, not been to Deadwood. We are a tourist town. Yes. So 70 to 75% of our customers, if not more, are first time just happen to walk by, see the place. It's like, oh my goodness, you can smoke down there and here we go. Yep. So um, normally, if it's depending on the cut, uh, it's usually going to be a V cut for most of them. Like I said, it, it's, you know, if they request a certain cut, then fine, I'll, I'll get right. that prep for them because obviously they know a little bit about cigars. But yeah. The ones that don't normally, and they're going to get whatever cigar they're after. Um, yeah, it's going to mostly be a V-cut. I don't punch unless somebody requests it. Or oh, you if, just feel physical. Yeah. If somebody yeah. asks for a punch, I hand them the punch because I'm like, I have never punched a cigar without cracking the fucking top. top, And then it just yeah, unravels gotta, on me. You, so. you have to hold it like this, very I, loosely and securely, but yeah. yet with a nice, firm grip. Excellent. I mean, I practice that. Then you you take the uh, female and you slowly screw it into the cap of the cigar and you will notice the pressure of your finger Mm. keeps the cap in place and it goes and it's done and you have a perfect punch. See, but I feel like the people that want a punch want their exact punch because they're punch people and that's the way they've always done it. Like V-cut and uh, straight cut can kind of wobble back and forth, you know? No, I hate V-cut. You hate V-cut? No, he, he plays I, with his tongue. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys know I smoke, yeah. so I bite. So right. if I do right. a V-cut, it smashes, and then my tongue is playing with it, and my tongue gets cut. Yeah. And then I'm like, this cigar sucks, no matter what the cigar is for me. You see, ever get a cigar I, that's from, the exact reason that I love the V-cut, though. Yeah, but mm-hmm. see, you ever get a cigar from Bill, he's going to straight cut that thing every time. Mm-hmm. You're going to get a straight cut. Because he's cutting all mine regardless, so it doesn't matter. And <laughs> right. that's a whole story we don't need yeah, to Yeah, that's a whole down, story, but. yeah. No, uh, no, personally, I mean, most for me, it's it's going to be a v-cut now when it comes up to a bellicoso or a, a torpedo end mm-hmm. um normally i'll probably end up straight cutting that usually just because uh rat tail obviously you're going to straight cut it yep um, i don't understand a v-cut on a torpedo i know people want it yeah but to me the duck lips yeah, yeah i just yeah. that doesn't make here's, sense here's my whole thing about v-cuts and the reason that i enjoy them and i don't, don't know go why. there this is because, isn't you porn channel <laughs> because when i put it in my teeth and mm-hmm. i'm collapsing that v-cut and then at a certain point, like halfway through the cigar, when it's collapsed and it's barely drying, I tar- turn it that quarter turn and it opens back up and I get that first big pull again. And I just, I enjoy that part of the whole but process. See, in a cigar race, you'd lose because I'd have the guillotine. I wouldn't have to do that. So <laughs> extra little second means I can burn past you. I mean, I feel like I smoke faster than anybody else. Probably, no, no, probably no, to my detriment. But No, uh, <laughs> the fastest smoker we have on this team is not you. Who's that? 
who who's the one of the shortest guys on the team that smokes the biggest fattest freaking cigars? Oh oh oh, oh 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 yeah. oh oh! Okay. Yeah, got He's kind of quiet yeah. right now, humming. Yeah. yeah, he chiefs. He'll take a seven inch cigar down in twenty minutes. <laughs> I shouldn't say take down, but wow, he took it down. Yeah, he destroyed it. But it never leaves his mouth either. No, but it's yeah. a steady just. You can tell where he Steam was roll. by the trail of ash. <laughs> yeah. <to> you, right? <laughs> now, the other thing I also uh, explain to people, and some people ask, you know, they see the cutters up on the counter, and mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, well, what's the difference? Why is this got a little backstop? And I'm like, all right, this is basically just cuts the tip of your finger off, not the whole finger. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, that's usually what I tell them. But <laughs> Didn't Michael Jordan do that in the past? I, I believe think, so. Yes, he I did. I think he did. <laughs> Reached into his pocket and went, snip. Yeah. Oh, God. But, um, I but tell he him, still threw up 63 points that he, night. Yes, he did. But I tell them, you know, a lot of times the back stops to help you from cutting in too deep on that. If you cut past the end of the cap, then yep. you can end up, you know, there's a little line on the back of the cigar for the people that don't smoke cigars or for some reason on here listening to this. Mm-hmm. You know, a little line on there. And if you cut past that, stuff could go bad. The Start line you're early. referring to is the actual cap end of the cap sits yes. on the, uh, the top of the cigar. So that, right. that cap will have a, it'll be content a little bit one side versus the other. Right. It's all put on by human hands. Yes. Yeah. But if you cut that whole thing off, then yeah, it starts unraveling. It is all kinds of crazy stuff. So. And then, then you hear, "Hey, dude. Yeah. This cigar yeah. sucks. The cigar's awful. It's unraveling in my mouth. All right. Where did you cut it? Mm. You can tell. Yeah. So you can tell. But um, then that's on number three, though. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's it. If the person comes in and says, "Hey, V, cut it. Cool. All yeah. right. Easy. Small V cut. Okay. Cool. Easy." Um, you know, if it's somebody that has no idea about cigars at all, they're coming in, they're getting a dragon, for example, one of the Deadwood Tobacco companies chasing the dragon. Yes. I'll usually V cut the smaller one. The oil I'll normally straight cut just because it's a bigger ring right. gauge. So And that has a lot to do with yeah. it. It's a bigger ring gauge is you can't you get a right. V cut in there and it's just the tiniest little right. thing. And it's it's not gonna get the pole that he needs. It could probably canoe or chimney or whatever the whatever it wants to do. Yep. So that's that's the difference I I do as a person to somebody who doesn't smoke a lot of cigars. Now, most people that come in, that come frequent our store all the time, they tell you right away yeah. what they want. So, yep. Plus, you mentioned earlier with that majority of our customers and where we're located, it also unfortunately gives us the greatest opportunity to sell one of those style of cutters. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because yep. they're like, oh, I love this cutter. Once you explain it to the yep. new con- consumer getting into this, uh, right. this lifestyle. And then... The DTC Perfect Cutter goes out, a uh, Zycar cutter with our logo. Yep. The Zycar table actually, table yeah. cut lighter. A yeah. kid today was just like, Oh, you got Zycar with your name on it? And I was like, Yeah, man, we've got it in a couple different colors. Which one do you want? Yada yada yada. Start talking about it a little bit. He's like, No, man, they're like indestructible. He goes, I've been using the same one. Me and my brother use the same one to cut cigars all the time. You know, it's just super, super sharp and super easy to use. And I was like, yeah, it's literally in my pocket 24-7. You know, that, that, that's the good thing about uh, Zycar. They came on when uh, Calibri was going down with their cutter. So they came in and offered, you know, free exchange on their cutter. And what helped them was there was a fireman. They had used it in an ad, actually. A fireman lost his uh, Zycar cutter, right? I mm-hmm. forget what the X1 something. True. Sure. And... Uh, Finally found it when they're sifting through it. He sent it to him. Oh, no wow. kidding. The handles burn off, but the actual cutter, cutter was still, still there. there. Still nice. there, so still they, sharp. They sent him a new one. Oh, that's awesome. And they kept it. Nice. Mm. Very cool. So it is indestructible. Yeah. yeah. So Even at, I don't know how many BTUs that fire was, <laughs> but it was hot. I mean, hot enough to melt the damn thing. I wouldn't have picked it up. No, nope. no, 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 no. And kind of going from that into the other, like, there's a, a certain way that, that you can light cigars. I mean, your torch is going to be the most efficient. You, you light her up and go, match, soft flame. What uh, what do you think, Bill? What's the, what's the you know, traditionalist way? What's the fast way? What's your preferred method? Well, from an historical pr- approach, you're going to want to use a piece of cedar if you're old, old, old school field guy, right? The yeah. same guy that uses his teeth to cut a cigar or slices it with his uh his buck thumb knife. <laughs> or, or or his buck knife yeah. uh, the romance of 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 picking a cigar is one thing and then lighting the cigar is another because you're starting it you're starting to have that relationship develop with it the sugars are going to start coming on and and i personally don't use a torch for i'll get to that in a reason 
but from a piece of cedar, then you would want to go to a cedar non sulfur match, mm -hmm. then a match, and then a soft flame. Now, some people want torches inside. I get it. But I think if you're going to use a torch, you should use it outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's too hot. I don't want to burn my cigar or caramelize the sugar, so I stay away from that. Um, and then when you caramelize the sugars, what is that going to actually do to the cigar? Is It's going to make it a little bit more bitter. It's correct? definitely not going to make it look like creme brulee. Yeah. But it will caramelize and it will become bitter. So that individual, when they light that, and, and that's a lot of heat caramelizing, that bitterness is going to come out. They're going to think it's part of the cigar. Mm -hmm. When in actuality, it, it was keeping the flame too close. Tobacco is going to light. It wants to light. It has the proper humidity in it too light so a soft flame you don't need a high btu it'll work so then you go 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 i know dudes that use i got st de Ponts, i got de Jeeps, i got bix i got matches at my home you've all been there you open mm -hmm. a drawer and there's tons of things to use mm -hmm. um two it, sticks i'll be honest it really <laughs> it really comes down to personal preference what you like right right i know dudes that do not like at all soft flame they put the flame up in that cigar and you can tell because the foot of the cigar will have a little charry look on the wrapper right and you notice that and it doesn't burn the wrapper but when you do it with a torch that tobacco will bubble up and then once it pops it kind of shreds off looks like crap so when you do toast a cigar and you're toasting it because you're getting it ready to burn but mm -hmm. you're also toasting it because it's going to lose its life here shortly and you only have X amount of minutes with this particular cigar to dance with it. So why mess it up? Pay attention. If you're going to use a torch, use it way away because the heat itself will start to char that tobacco. And that's all you want to do when you're torching a, or torching, <laughs> when you're toasting a cigar. Uh, you just want to get it going because you can have it in your mouth. Then the flame could be down by your knees and that heat will draw up. Right. And then you get a perfect burn. The cigar doesn't look like crap. It, it shows how well it was rolled. It, it's not going to fall apart and flake funny. Well, the funny, the funny thing that I think, especially being in the tourist town that we are, is I have to tell everybody, you stand right there. I'll come to you with the flame because I'm going to burn your bangs, your hat, your Speaking glasses, about bangs, I know that, whatever. That, that would have to refer to uh, a lot of females, too, because they have bangs today. And they still want to, like... Extend their, in. yeah, they still extend that neck out, yeah, yeah. And which I appreciate. If you've ever been to the <laughs> shop, our our counter is super high, so when they bend down, I mean, they're damn near to the chin on the counter, and you're trying to, you know, angle, angle it away. And Tony and, and I are short, so what do you think that's yeah, like? Yeah, I got to stand on a step stool for Christ's sake. I mean, give me a break. Right, and now you, tell them, don't move. Your hair looks pretty. Yeah. How do you like to light yours? What's that? How do you like to light yours? What's your um, preferred method? Normally, it depends on my. I'm not. A traditional so far so i mean 90 percent of the time i'm probably gonna grab whatever i can find on our counter yeah, that hasn't true. been taken yet <laughs> just being honest i mean i will toast it with a torch because that's usually what we have the other reason why when i light people's cigar with a torch i usually hold on to it so that way we can maintain set torch mm. and it does not walk off true story which it happens and it's just like a pen you know somebody borrows a pen next thing you know it's in their pocket you're not paying attention it's gone but it's not anything to, it's just habit right right do you think that uh, coming from like the cigarette world, I don't know why this just popped into my mind, but cigarettes is all about that instant gratification, light it fast, smoke right. it fast, yeah, put it out fast. That's probably where a lot of mine comes from. Mm -hmm. So um, I use matches sometimes. At home, I'll use a match, right? And I'll fire it up, let the sulfur burn off, get into the wood really good. Yep. Two, three matches at a time, not just one. Yep. One, will, on one will never light even a simple Robusto. Yeah. Uh, 50 by 5 it just won't do it it's going to run out before you can get into it yep. so two three matches fire it up burn off the sulfur bring it in slow you know let it do its thing and, mm -hmm. and it's the romance nice it's the yeah. romance of right. it all that's, well and that's the beginning of it i feel like it's also the experience because i feel like when i first started it was just grab a torch and let her go and mm -hmm. you know that was that and now i've slowly gotten into the matches speaking and, about that it cracks me up when they grab the torch for a cigarillo and do that. Oh, my oh God, God, yeah. The, half the thing is incinerated. Yeah. <laughs> that mm -hmm. tasted good. Then they ask if they're going to cut that. You know, the little the little ones in the jar we got. Right. Hey, you going to cut that? And I'm like, if I cut it, there ain't going to be nothing left to smoke, dude. <laughs> Plus, Enjoy. it's already cut. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's got a Padron 50th. He's got a 
little Tatiana, sweet Tatiana. Uh, groovy blue. Yeah. Right. Go up to the bar. She gets a Guinness. He gets a you know, like. white claw. <laughs> something like that. So, anyway, the wait, wait, which the one do we got blue. now? Is it mango or something they're drinking? Uh, or what is, I, don't I don't know, know what, what the hell it is. Anyway. White claw. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, white claw uh, watermelon. Watermelon. But and look, then we have look, the pineapple. Let, let's be honest about something. <laughs> At least he went up from a Coors Light to a White Claw. You know, he went from three point two or two point three up to five percent. Oh yeah, 5%, he, he's so. looking for the. He went he's from, looking for the quick. Yeah, he went from he's Coors not, Light yeah. to White Girl Wasted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's not stupid. No, he's, he's not. showing his sensitive side to society. Right. That's the instant gratification. That's the so. torch and White Claw and woo. So when you walk into Deadwood Tobacco um, and you pick your cigar out and you want to do the dance, as Bill says, mm-hmm. um, we do have all three choices. We We'll give you either matches. Um, you can even pick cedar out. We have a cup full of cedar uh, strips. Yep. So you, if you have a Zippo, for example, a Zippo has that that really fluidy smell to it. Dirty right? fuel diesel. Yeah. You no. don't want to light a cigar with a Zippo straight off. You know, you know what well, a Zippo period. reminds me? Yeah. The Zippo f- smell reminds me of, Tony. What? When I got in trouble in the Marine Corps. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> this Here Every go. time I smell the Zippo fluid, it just... Or a big diesel truck, right? That right. smell takes me back to when I got in trouble and I had to pull out that half a barrel out and uh, <laughs> oh, put some diesel and fuel in there and, and, up. and a really big, thick, old oh, boom yeah, handle yeah, and I had yeah. to stir up the the <laughs> gases that were in there. Every time somebody does that, and when they buy a Zippo from us, I'm like, right. you have to ask, do you want this filled? Yeah. I know it's my rule, and I sold the Zippo. And I'm like, this is not going to be a good experience Wait for a minute. me. The last one you sold, you passed that shit off to me to fill. Notice that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Wait a minute. What the fuck? All right. No. Um, I had but too people many that memories. die by it, though. There's people that still light their cigars right. and their pipes. And oh. when we have people that buy Zippo, we have Zippo collectors that run around there. Oh, and we, sure. we try to get different kinds of Zippos that normal shops just don't carry so yeah we never have the same one no and never. uh when we uh bring them in somebody's like hey i want that zippo or, you know you want it filled yep okay i'll fill it get it all prepped and ready for them then they're gonna grab that cigar and i'm like ah, don't use your zippo to light it grab no. three or four sticks of the cedar right here mm-hmm. light your zippo on the seat you know get the zippo going and fire up your cedar then light your cigar yeah. because the fuel will completely contaminate that cigar and make it taste like a bag of ass right yes <laughs> mm-hmm Mm, so. And then with the, I mean, with that whole experience, uh, it's either one way or the other. Kind of moving on to the pairing side of this. I right. mean, pairing the cigar with the beer or pairing the beer with the cigar. I've done both sides of this whole thing, and just to make sure that they have uh, adequate palate that it's not overpowering the cigar and stuff right. like that. It just a lot of people are going straight for the sweet cigars. You know, I don't know time and place. You know, what are what should people be looking at when they pick out a cigar bill? Like what they've done during the day, if they had orange juice versus if they had... You, what you know. they eat, what they drink, and their mood will affect how that cigar is. Right? Because right. when, you, when you inundate your palate with a bunch of flavor throughout the day, whether it's Taco Bell for breakfast, then you move on to Burger King, and then you go on to... a rough to, day. Right, then you go wow. on to McDonald's. Well, you're over 50 now, that's why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, Taco Bell's not happening at breakfast. No, but... For this man. You're, you're coating your palate, so if, if you don't have anything that's a natural palate cleanser to keep it clean, like an almond or a root beer, something that's going to strip it and keep it clean, keep it open so you can taste the rawness of the tobacco, um, that's what, that's what we try to do there is explain to the novice... Pay attention to your mood, mm-hmm. what you ate and what you drank. It will affect. And I, I use a Swisher Sweet grape to explain it, right? So, like, if you're coming home, your boss gave you a $15,000 raise, you know you have a 2-year-old and a 1-year-old, right? And your wife's at home. And she comes home, and you don't hear no crying. And you're like, where's everybody at? And you see her in the kitchen, and she gives you that look. That look like, yeah, you're in trouble tonight. Yeah. In a good way. Mm-hmm. Ah. And she looks at you, winks, and says, hey, go downstairs and grab one of your cigars and enjoy it. Dinner will be ready. And you go, where's the kids? I gave them to my mother for the night. Now you know right there your mood just elevated to the roof. Right. So that Swisher Sweet Grape is going to be the best grape taste you've ever had. <laughs> now, let's say your boss tells you, hey, I'm going to reduce your pay by $15,000 because we're going to take a hit. It's 
raining outside cats and dogs. You forgot your raincoat. You're all wet. Mm -hmm. Your wife comes home, the two-year-old's screaming. The wife throws the one-year-old at you and says, I'm going to my mom's, right? Yeah. I've had it. And you're like, what the hell? Right. So you get the kids calmed down, you put them to bed, and you go get that Swisher Sweet Grape. Your mood's affected. Yeah. So that Swisher Sweet Grape's going to be watered down, mm -hmm. right? Because you're going to puff a little fast. It's going to not taste the same way. Right. Then whatever you ate that day, whatever you drink that day, mm -hmm. that's all going to affect your decision on what to smoke. See, and I smoke differently. When I smoke at home, I smoke completely, well, not completely different, but different cigars than I do when I'm at work. I mean, we were just talking earlier, me and Stash were about how, you know, the mood's okay, then we're going to just, you know, keep with these, you know, decently light, whatever, right. palatable cigars. If you, your mood increases and you're a little bit more irritated, you want that kick in the back of the mouth. You want that kick-ass cigar that's going to get the leather. Well, let me know, ask you pepper. guys this. See, at work, when it's busy, I still smoke the same thing, right? Every day. Yeah. yeah at home, that's do. not necessarily what I smoke like you guys. Right. But I, I know what the cigar is going to do for me. After years and years of learning, at the shop, I know you guys pick because you don't want to smoke something that tastes a little bit better because you're going to be busy. You might go out. So that's why I find my staples to smoke all day. And that's that's what you see me smoking at the shop, right. period. That doesn't mean I don't like cigar A, D, Z, E. Mm -hmm. It just means when it's time to be at that shop, I know if I pick this cigar up, I know whether it's busy or it's slow, it's going to impact me the same way. And that's the consistency I'm looking for. Yeah. I want that same consistent flavor so I don't have to worry. Wait, was that nutmeg and cinnamon? <laughs> right. Because you know my you palate. know what's coming. My yeah. palate is going to stop and make me question. Yeah. Translation. And, when he gets busy, he puts cigar in random spot that I'll either knock it off the yes. counter. Yeah, absolutely. Or it'll be somewhere else. Or lean against. That's, yes. That's always fun. Then well. it sits there for an hour because he forgot about it because he, he, he has a tendency to educate yes. a lot, which is good. Yeah. But he's it's educating part of the experience. for 45 minutes, and I finally walk over with a cigar, and of course I know it's going to sit in the ashtray, and he's not going to smoke it because now it's gotten what? Well, in the wintertime, <laughs> it would have gotten too cold, too and, cold yeah, and yeah. I would not smoke it. Right. Uh, but... I know what it is. So I'm just, I, we all have our, throwing it out there. I don't like an ice cube. I know, okay. I get I'm it. not going to do it. Cold saliva on the end of a cigar is not something Bill enjoys. I can tell you that. Even when it's my saliva. Right. Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah. We all, we've, we've done that by accident more than once. <laughs> but, go down that road. But pairings, right? You said beer. Yeah. Mm. Beer, wine. Well, those, we, those are going to be two different entities on how to pair. Oh, for sure. Beer is simple, yeah. right? If you really want to get into it, yeah, we could take the beer apart and take the cigars apart and really pair them, like, to the T. But I would want all the accoutrements, too. If I need walnuts or almonds or pecans that are unsalted, what fruit do I need to go with it? What chocolates if I need it? Yeah. Right? That's what's going to bring out the nuances of the cigar that are already in there. Those attributes that I'm adding are already there to bring them out. Right. So when you pair up a beer with the cigar... Very simple. Connecticut with a light beer. As you get darker, a little heavier. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, that doesn't mean you can't get some favorite beer you like with your favorite cigar because you're in an amped up mood, right? Right. Everything's going to commingle that way. Yeah. But if you're strictly talking about what the cigar is and what the beverage is and how they're going to have a nice romantic dance on your palate, then you're going to have to look at the attributes itself of that cigar and that wine. Yeah. So that's part of the 45-minute education we do so right. everybody mm -hmm. understands this. Because when we're in the humidor selling the cigar, we're not at the bar selling the, the beer or the wine. Right. But when you sell the cigar, Tony, to them in the humidor, and you bring them to the register, you're ringing them up. Hey, do you want a drink? All right, I saved it. Go over there. Yeah. Pierce is over there. You just funneled them over there. Oh, that's a great stick. You know what would go great with that? Yep. Yeah. He gives them a beer option and a wine option if they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And you already premised it in the humidor. Right. So that's why I have to educate, and that's why pairings are different for beer and different for wine. If we're going to use a big, beautiful Cabernet Rumbauer, right. right, all that fruit that dissipates as it goes back on the palate and doesn't linger, but it has just beautiful, different fruits up forward, do you want a cigar that's going to linger past it? Something a little bit more? 
because you don't necessarily want all that sugar overcompensating right. that rawness of the tobacco. Right. Now, some people do like the sweet style of cigar, and they don't care if they get a Riesling with it. That's just their jive. They're going to yeah. go for it because right. the blues are playing up on the stage, and they're loving it. Mm -hmm. But you're right. We do pair all the time. It's second nature for us. We like to do it. It's about the experience and the culture of Deadwood tobacco. And I think period. I, I think I, like you, you know a lot more about wine than I do. And I was in the beer world so long that I really meticulously pair cigars with beer. As soon as I see, oh, you have a Padron? I got, I got three beers here. I'll line them up on the bar. You pick which one. This, this one one's going to do this. Yep. This one's going to do this. This one's right. going to do this. You know, are you here for the tobacco or do you like the beer flavor more? You want something that's going to cut through the tobacco yeah. or do you want the tobacco to cut through the beer? You know, there's all these weird little attributes that I, I try to keep in, in mind, even if they don't fucking have a clue or care what this pairing is. I still try to do it just as a as a courtesy. Yeah, as a courtesy. It's a courtesy. Stuff. Obviously, we've talked about how we're a tourist town. What's some of the uh, the don'ts of etiquette that you've seen? Just <laughs> the horrendous. Like the deep throat of the whole Toro cigar. Oh. Just, oh my. Oh, we, we, we got this. Right. You know, you get the guy, he comes in, you give him the cigar, you take it out of the wrapper, you cut it, right? Or you don't even get a chance to cut it. And he's well, like, yeah, that, that, that. Can you cut this, please? I, I ain't touching it. Nope. Yeah, nope. <laughs> Not happening. No, but, I mean, you get, you get the guy and he's like, you get the cigar. It, say I cut it for him and then gave it to him and he's. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Oh, geez, gratuitous. <laughs> Oh, man. You can stop. Yeah. <laughs> Does it taste that good? <laughs> All right. Let me enjoy this. You got a match? <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, okay. Yeah. It, That's a don't. <laughs> That's a big don't. I mean, that was one of those things way, way back in the day you had to do, right? Yeah, because right. there wasn't humidification. They sh they were shipped out here in a wagon. Right. <laughs> in a box, you know. Or, or the same guy that goes in and, and you see this sometimes they dip it in a glass of wine or dip it right. oh that tastes good let me try it with the beer and you're like dude if the master blender wanted that to be done he would have done it to that cigar yeah if the master brewer wanted that in the beer or wine they would have done that well, and, and instead then drink just smoke it drink it and watch how it works together yeah and then they're drinking this wine that has particles of their tobacco that's loosened up because it's so oversaturated in their wine and i'm just like Whoa, hey what what's God. the sediment here um yeah well, that was dude, your cigar your buddy. tobacco yeah that's oh. i haven't seen too much of that in our in our i haven't seen it because i'm usually over on the other side so oh yeah, it yeah but, the bar a lot. but another etiquette when you're walking into a a, a cigar shop uh, read the your, shop. your traditional cigar store Right. Not your hookahs with a humidor and all that other right. stuff. But when you walk into a place, you don't go screaming and yelling. No. It's not like you walk into Starbucks and go, I don't want to scream in the mic right now. I almost did. Yeah. But <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you're like, okay, you're here. Thanks. Yeah. There's other people in intimate conversations, mm -hmm. business conversations. They don't right. need to hear that. Read Keep the call. Read the room. Right. When you walk read into it. any place, you read a room. Yeah. You know, it's like it's, going into a library versus going into a loud bar yeah yeah C come you know? on in when the music's playing and scream we right. don't have a problem when it's dead yeah. quiet on yeah. a sunday afternoon oh, the woohoo boys and girls come in and they're yeah. all hooped and hollered yeah the the great thing about the store is i don't know what it is but the essence of the store <laughs> they seem to calm down faster than any other bar atmosphere that i've worked in they come in all heightened and whoa god we're gonna get some shots we're gonna smoke some fucking skip, blah, 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 blah. and then all of no. a sudden yeah. they, they look around and nobody's responding to them because that's what they want they want somebody to join in the woohoos yeah. and everybody else is just kind of like yeah thanks cool and then all of a sudden their energy is just like yeah. oh i guess we're, we're just gonna go sit over here at a table and they're we're gonna, we're gonna talk like this instead of then they go wow this place is cool i like it yeah then they leave and go get drunk yes which is fine. Which yeah. is absolutely fine. Yeah. Then they come back. Yes. They and they buy a cigar back. and they smash it. <laughs> they smash oh, it. Don't. Hey, we got to mm. go, man. I have five inches, but I only smoke two. Uh, I'm going to smash this. Yes. Or they smash it or they pour water into the ashtray or beer or whatever the hell it is. It's a hell of a marsh pit. Yeah. And then they smash it on top of that and it's just dis. So, so realistically, right? What you're saying is <laughs> a cigar is like a relationship. There's when nothing, it, when it, nothing wrong time, with that. No. When it's time to let the cigar go, the relationship is over. Yeah, Don't just, smash it like stash. No. Just let it go. Just set it in the ashtray. They're, tr mm -hmm. they're trying to make a shaggy foot. Yeah. Let it die with dignity. 
you, you know, you just insulted every roller that had their hands. How many hands have been on this cigar? Five to eight hundred. Yeah, you, you you don't do this. You no. just set it in the ashtray. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And we'll take it because the thing they don't understand either is when we go to get the ashtray, right? All that tobacco is very light. Yeah. It takes very little walking, and that whole ashtray is it's all out over. in the yeah. air on the floor. Right. It's not something that's necessarily difficult to clean up, but the etiquette of it, just let it go. We can take it to a bucket, even if it's lit, put it in there, let it go out. Yes. Yeah. Let it rest. Yeah. Well, we, and sometimes when they smash it like that too, it'll smolder for far oh, yeah. longer. They'll walk it out. Have. It'll walk out and it's like a campfire is going on on yeah. table number but two over there. That's when know? that's when you can taste the hint of uh, a zest of orange and, and lead. Yeah. Like some of these magazines say. Right. No, I just smell the worst nasty yeah. pungent. Because now it's blowing the whole thing apart yeah. and it's just burning individual sections of it, not a complete cigar. So now we're going to move into experience. Yeah. So how to choose the right cigar. We sort of went over a little bit of that. We so. did go over a little yeah. bit of that. Uh, choosing the right cigar is going to you know, change from person to person, and that's what we are there for is to help facilitate you choosing your next cigar. Um, maybe you know. Maybe you're well-versed in cigars, but like I like to tell people, yeah, is there the first time that you had this cigar? Cool. This is going to be the first time you had this cigar. How do you know if you don't like this cigar? I mean, if it's going to be in the same lineup and everything else, you had your beautiful experience with this cigar. Awesome. Now, if you want to have a beautiful experience, because these are people that are like, oh, you know, I, I always smoke this certain one, and I'm kind of looking to get. Like the guy that was in this weekend. Something hey, else. I'm looking for a nub. That's what I love. Yeah. And Fat Bottom Betty. Mm. Yeah. Right? So he gets them, right? Two different two right. different genres. Spectrums. Mm-hmm. Completely and then you start, different. then you start talking to him, and he's like, no, I like this. I like that. I like this. And you're like, wait yep. a minute, bro. Yeah. You're all over the board. I, yep. I'll respect you're all over the board. That's great. Yeah. But when you're adamant about it, and you're like, this is all I smoke. Yeah. And you're like, well, wait a minute now. You just named off 15 other ones you yeah. smoke. So is it right. all cigars or just that cigar? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know. The dude, hey, God bless him, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. But you can't you can't uh, solve everybody's problems. No, that's for no, sure. No. Um, no, but you try that's to broaden the spectrum a little bit. That's right? why there's different people and different cigars. Yep. Um, helping difficult people. Oh. That don't know anything. What, Those are all right. What is a difficult person that doesn't know anything? Most of them. I, well, I don't know if that's worded right. Uh, most of them aren't difficult. It's you know, I come in normally. You know, hey, how you doing? The greet usually. On, you know, on a slow. Where, well, it's not a Friday night or Saturday night. Obviously, I work days, so usually I have time to well, um, greet everybody. I don't understand because an Ashton cabinet doesn't have spice. Correct. Wrong. What's Wrong. vanilla? What's nutmeg? Yeah. Right? Well. And and you're like, wait a minute, brother. That's spiced. Don't you make chocolate chip cookies? Yeah. I'm in right? that one, I'm thinking of the highly combative ones. Yeah. Oh, I'm the, that's that's where I'm starting. Yeah, yeah. this is where he's and going. You, with and it. you start explaining it to him because you've read the books, the encyclopedias, right. the Perlmans, you've been educated by Manny Ferraro and Robbie Levin and a few other people out there. And you're like, All right, dude. Now I'm going to put on my uh, my brain housing group and bring right. out my library of knowledge. Right. And I'll start the debate. And then it's going to get escalated. I'm not trying to escalate as much as I'm trying to show him, hey, look, man, if you just open up your ears, open up your eyes, close your mouth, yeah. I'm going to give you mind. a little bit of information here to expand your knowledge. That's it. I don't know everything, but I definitely know the Ashton Cabinet has a spice to it. It's not right. cayenne pepper. No, it's... Right? Right? it's- it's elegant. elegant. It's classy spices. To me, it's, it's to me my palate. It's a creamy, almost vanilla. Right. Uh, little touch of maybe like I don't want to say paprika. That's going to be too big. Uh, nutmeg or something. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. a touch. Yeah. Right. You know that that's still a spice, right? But my palate, your palate, his palate. Yeah. Everybody's going to read things a little different. Well, the worst one I think I ever had was it wasn't too long ago actually, and the guy walked in and he goes, "I'm looking for." A sweet Jane, but I want a Connecticut wrapper. And I'm like, uh, it's not going to happen on sweet yeah. Jane. I said, I have never seen a sweet Jane. Oh, yes, no, no, they have them. And I'm like, they have an insidious, yeah. which is not a full blown sweet cigar. Non traditional, right? Right. It's I said, bridge cigar. Yeah. And I, I, show, I explained it to him. And, the, you know, no, 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 it was a sweet Jane. It had the sugar skull. It was, it was a Connecticut wrapper. And I'm like, sir, they don't make those. Oh, yeah, they do. I've bought them before. 
no you didn't and he goes i don't like i don't like oh i don't like the maduro wrappers are too strong and i turned around and said no offense sir and when it comes to a cigar like that you could dip a roll of toilet paper in sugar water yeah it isn't gonna the strength. It's it's not about the strength. It's what about is corn the, syrup? Corn yeah. syrup covers everything, right? Yeah. And the only thing you're gonna get is corn syrup. You're not sweetness. You're not tasting. It's it's not the not that a sweet Jane's gonna knock you on your butt anyway. But I mean, right. it's it's a fairly mild cigar anyway, as it is. Correct. But I'm like, sir, it's it's a sweet cigar, and like I said, it isn't gonna the wrapper isn't gonna make a difference now that you've coated it or infused it or steeped whatever it. you did it steeped yeah, it steeped. did whatever you did to it. Yeah. You've now completely changed that to a whatever flavor you're trying to make. Yeah. And he just got all a bent, you know, bent out of shape. He's like, well, I'll go find it. I'm like, well, when you do, can you please send me an email? Because I'd love to see it. Yeah. Because I've never seen one. Yes. It's now, unlike that, <laughs> that box of Sweet Jane that we got back that was not sweet. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> that was an entertaining uh, train wreck. You know, look. look. Not, and not, it wasn't anything uh, against Drew no, State or no, no, anybody no, no. Nothing else. like that. That that happened it to me once. It was a once. mistake. That actually happened to me once at uh, Lake Country Cigars in Delafield, Wisconsin, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing a DE event. The house is rocking. We're having a good time selling stuff. And, uh, um, oh, man, her name escapes me right now. But uh, she bought several boxes. She comes back up, and she's like, hey, Bill, I want you to try this Sweet Jane. I'm like, nah, I'm good. And she's like, no, seriously, there's no sweetness. And I'm like, nah, that can't be. There's sweetness on that cigar. She goes, yeah. no, I swear it's not there. Yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You smoked that. That was already in your mouth. She goes, I'll get you a new one. I'm like, nah, we're good. She came back with one. Yeah. Put my cigar out, cut it, toasted it, put it in my mouth and went, no. <laughs> Didn't even light it. <laughs> there was no sweetness <laughs> in any one of Ooh. those cigars in the box. Nope, not Ooh. good. Uh, it no. was just, it happens, right? Yeah. right? It, it yeah. was a mistake. You, you it, hope your process is perfect, right. right? but no process is perfect. Well, they're all human made. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So some, yeah. th it happened for whatever reason. But, but to me, the actual funny thing is all 24 cigars were all non-sweet. That's how did that get into the same box? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When they sort and color right. and then cellophane and put it in the box. Yeah. How did that happen? That had to have been like it just happened to be that day where the roller, that batch, the batch, and that roller that got was those twenty four, slapped them in yeah, there. I was gonna say it was his last. Went to the they, next they station. Didn't, they didn't let him to go home and yeah, and go do whatever in yeah. Nicaragua. So he right. was like, "All right, I'll teach them." Yep. I mean, I'm gonna do this and go to a different factory. Yeah. Right. Most people, and, and the only other ones that will irritate me are the ones that have that have, and I'm not saying well, they do irritate me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the ones that come in, they've had. You know, gas station Swisher Sweets, they've had maybe the, one the, or two the, cigars. The cigars out of a humor that are completely dry in those right. small they, stores. Yeah, yeah, they've been sitting in there, you know, in the hookah store. They've in the corner, back buried behind in some dust. Yeah. Haven't now, been checked on. on forever. Just so people know, we're not picking on people, right? No. It's just the geographical area we're at. We mm -hmm. have a lot of these style of, of, of cigar stores out yes. here. In, yeah. The western half of or eastern half of Wyoming, western half of South Dakota, yeah, right. North Dakota, and all that. So we're not picking. We're just saying there's not that many cigar shops in South Dakota. There's three, three yeah. that you can smoke in. Yeah. There's the rest maybe are a handful of others right. that have a little desktop right. humidor with four or five. And different unfortunately, kinds out here, it. that's the only place they can get it. Right. Yeah. And that's it is what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But back to what you were saying. And the, they they've had very limited experience, but they come in. And they're like, oh, no, I know what I want. And they go in. And the one, the one guy, I tried to help him like three times. And he's like, no, I got this. I'm, I'm good. And he was, I don't, I think he was showing off is what he was doing. Because he, he had his lady with him. Yeah. He goes and grabs an Eileen, Eileen, Eileen's dream. Eileen? Eileen, yeah. Eileen. Do you know Come that, on, Eileen. Do, do you know that Eileen's dream <clears throat> is for the daughter of Kano at CAO? Oh. Really? That yeah, did not know that. Huh. Yeah, okay, well, that's pretty yeah. good. Yep. So he grabbed one of those, and it was the the bigger one. So it's got the cedar and the little yeah, the green. Yeah. What we had then, Toro Robusto back then. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a, I think it was a Robusto, and you know he gets it. You know, cut. Yeah, V cut, please. No, 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 no. Don't no. Oh yeah. Are you this is seriously? Where it's this is where he did. Go. Oh yeah. Oh, so he was no, talking. He no. was sitting here like talking, oh. explaining all these cigars he's had. Wait a Describe the lady. She was. Petite, pretty, pretty, long hair. Now uh, was he a big like, pretty boy? Nah, he was. He was tall, 
lanky, but he was well dressed. Sport yeah, jacket, pretty boy, shirt, yeah, yeah, nice shoes. So he sits there, you oh, know. I, I know what's coming. Cut. Oh yeah. Oh. Did the cut? Oh. Go over. They go get a beer. And uh, you should have just let him do. Yeah. The whole, I, I'm I sorry, I'm ruining it. Yeah, uh. I did. I didn't. I did. I figured he knew what he was. Ta- he said he knew what he was doing. So I'm like, okay, cool. I, un- you know, took it out of the wrap, uh, the excess wrapper. I put a V cut on it. Yep. Gave it to him. He rolls over. Rico helps him with beer. They go up to the front table, the furthest away from me, like the one by the fireplace right there. And this is like a. It was like a, I think this is when I was still working weekday. So it was like a. Uh, it had to have been a Wednesday. Right. And, that was before we hired Grimes then. Right. Yeah, all right. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, you know, talking to Rico, and all of a sudden I'm like, what the hell is that smell? Because <laughs> nobody else is smoking on? but me and Rico. and this the humidor couple. on fire? Yeah. What's going right. on? And I'm like, man, it smells like burnt-ass plastic and cedar. What the F? I walk over to him. He is still token on this thing. Oh, God. And he goes, this thing does not taste like Irish cream and uh, Irish whiskey and... and uh, white chocolate white truffles chocolate and Irish truffle, cream. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Irish cream, white chocolate <laughs> truffles. I go, no, it probably tastes like burnt plastic and fucking cedar because you didn't take the stupid <laughs> sleeve off. So I pulled the sleeve off. You saw her, you saw her go from like googly eyed all yeah. his knowledge of cigars to like <laughs> you're a fucking idiot i took it out gave him another one pulled the sleeve off cut it and said now try it it's probably gonna taste yeah, exactly like i better. yeah <laughs> like you want it. i'm like oh my god you know those are the people are you saying sometimes the big swing of dick doesn't swing yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> that thing shriveled up like a turtle yeah he had to stick his ass my question his ass is my, snake. Left here's what i want to know if you remember after you gave him that cigar how long did he stay? Oh no, <laughs> not very long. They they sucked that. Well, he sucked his beer down. It was like, let's go. Yeah, yeah literally. Where else can we smoke this? Yep. On the street, homie. <laughs> Hers was like three quarters full, still a beer, and he was out. out. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it look, happened, you did, you didn't want to demasculate him. Okay, no, I get no, it. I let but, him. I let him ride his train that he was on, and he he knew what he was looking for, and I let him do that. And I was like, okay, cool. You under, you know, now and on a Friday, Saturday, if I happen to work into the evening or we have a special event going on in town, yep. I will flat either take it off for them, especially uh fat bottom buddy. It's got the foot band on. Yep. 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 I don't know how many of those I've they seen burn go up in up. flames. Oh yeah. Um, Ethan's got a hell of a good story about the, uh, leaf by Oscar. No, <laughs> dude, oh, yeah. dude, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. I've had that. This yeah. was, I think there was three, uh, maybe more, four or five young guys, right? And they came in, and the, all they knew was Leap by Oscar. And they, they saw that funky rap on it, and they're like, oh, dude, this looks all rustic and awesome. Mm. <laughs> they got them, and uh, I, I mean, I asked, taking them to go, yeah, yeah. So I bag them up. Next thing I know, I look over the table, and uh, they get them out, and they're trying to Fire put a flame up. on this thing right flame this fucking eye. <laughs> yeah the flame was eating the cigars so i mean there's oh, these massive like five flames are burning up everywhere and i'm like holy cow man you're gonna light the whole place on fire it was <laughs> it was comical man it was just comical i can't tell you how many times i've reached across that fucking bar on a friday saturday night and no no no, no no yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and i try to make it as i just like motion right. over with my finger and I'm just like there you go I, I know you guys wouldn't do what I would do but n- don't necessarily follow in my footsteps <laughs> uh, if I see that I walk hey let me see that and you guys have seen me yeah. do this mm-hmm. and I look at it and I, I smell it and then I just snap it in half yeah. yep. and the dude looks at me I'm like look man I'm gonna get you a new one but uh, I'm gonna teach it too yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. go get it to him and then I'm like look I know you're gonna feel stupid cause I'm gonna tell you you're stupid <laughs> yeah why would you smoke the cedar Yep. I just thought, yeah, nah, bro. There's no. tape there. See the tape? <laughs> yeah, tape. You don't want tape. Think yeah. about. It. He's Who like, lights a ribbon, man? man. <laughs> couple people. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's well, a couple people. But my my rule of thumb now is is if I well, I work days ninety percent of the yeah. time, but that rare occasion I'm there on a day or we have a special event coming. Wait, like, it's like every Friday he's still there at night. Well, yeah. uh, and Saturday, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. oh, well, anyway. Yeah. And I end uh, up the shipping lady called again. Yeah, <laughs> it's only seven thirty. Go. Yeah, I gotta go. Dinner was ready at five thirty. What time are you home yeah. after I get off? The, then you ask him. Then yeah, <laughs> hey, what, what's for? I don't know. Probably some chicken nuggets in the air fryer. Yeah. 
And now I'm like, man, chicken nuggets sounds yeah, good. Yeah, it does sound Wait a minute. Good. It was a TV dinner. I can reheat it. It's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he said, <laughs> he said that before and he stayed. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it, it's it's. Usually, That's actually why we hired her. Yeah. yeah. So she knew what it was it, like. It's comic relief is all it is for them. It for is. me, it's a torturous hell that never ends. But for the rest of you guys, it's comic oh, relief. Whatever. Anyway, and on a Friday evening now, it's like in the minute I come in and first I'm judging them, looking at them because when they're fumbling around with their wallet trying to get their cash out, and I'm like, oh, this is okay. <laughs> Let no. me take this off. Let me do this. <laughs> yeah. Let me unwrap it. Here's your cut. Here's some matches. You know, you know, you know what's funny, luck. right? The ladies that buy those same cigars. They know. They, they actually go. Should I take this off? Yeah. Yeah. They ask the yeah. question. The right. guys are too. They're too. They know. They're too macho. Too macho to say nope. Yep. Can't. Nope. I'm, I know what I'm doing. Leave me the yeah. hell. Alone. Well, look. It's because we all have facial hair. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. We're all mean looking bikers. Yes. <laughs> and too intimidating to talk to about cigars. That. And we the sad thing is, that's all we want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We just want to talk. <laughs> we that's just want to be understood. Come down to Deadwood so we can talk to you. <laughs> we all want right. to talk. <laughs> Events, bro. We got one yep. coming up. Speaking of which, whoop, yes, whoop. we do. Event we have craziness. Mardi Gras. Dude, you know what I call Mardi Gras on Deadwood now? Gras. What's that? The preemptive strike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. But you know what I'm scared it's of? It's the kickoff, man. But yeah. what I'm scared of is Mardi Gras getting bigger. It, oh, it is. Huge. It got big. So so we're bringing in, uh, oh, yeah, we're bringing Mr. Abs. Oh, yeah. My wife's, so, my so, wife's hey, boyfriend. So, hey, for everybody out town. there uh, <laughs> this coming weekend, I just want to let you know that Not this weekend... Uh, okay, March fifth and sixth next weekend. Next it, weekend, nope. it, no, whatever. It's coming <laughs> up. Snow cross. <laughs> whatever. Sam's coming to town from Ashton. That's what I was getting to. So everybody out there, uh, when Sam comes in from Ashton for Mardi Gras with Sawyer beer on the twenty uh, fifth, twenty sixth, you're gonna love it because I can gar- guarantee one thing that's gonna happen that weekend. Diana won't leave. That's one. Well, well, <laughs> ho- well. Ho- hold on, hold on. I guarantee. She's going to have to leave. Yeah. yeah. Because she can only take so much of the ass. That's true. Yeah. Before yeah. Tony um, starts smiling. Yeah. It's like, hey, honey. So, so a little it's, nudge. It's, it's yeah. a little. Tony doesn't like Mardi Gras, but he loves Mardi Gras. Right. Right. He doesn't have to get the beads. No. No. <laughs> they no. just come home to him. Yep. I know I'm going to get some tonight because yeah, Sam's she, in town. Oh, Game man. on. I don't care. I'm getting mine. She might be thinking of him at the time. It don't matter. It doesn't the hands. Matter. I don't but, care. Yeah, but the good thing good. is. Sam messes with her. Oh yeah, and oh, Sam will. Funny. Yeah, Sam will go. Oh yeah. Hey, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, ah. and she turns into a sixteen-year-old girl. Yep. In front of the Beatles, <laughs> turns red, starts oh, it's giggling. Hilarious. It's it's great. She's old enough. Even she's old that. enough. Like we're all old enough to be his parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah That's yeah. what's crazy. But yeah. he's got the washboard abs. I mean, ladies. Dude uh, never works. Yeah. Look. Oh, he's, he's a slick-looking fellow. Oh Look, yeah. He's he awesome. works out, yeah. but I've told him this before. It's not fair that guy gave him that body. No. No. He gave me this body. And, and Actually, I don't, I don't give a shit about his body. His fucking hair, man. He's a pretty boy. I know. What about the hair? Oh, I got hair. Look, look. <laughs> Not like Sam. Look, no. S- <laughs> Sam, Sam we're going to have on, but but Sam is, when you look at him, you think that dude comes from something. Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. Sam, nah, no. bro. No. His no. story is amazing. Yeah. Fair enough. I can't yeah, wait he, to talk to him. Oh, dude, that cat. Yeah. Let's I'll, not spoil it. Let's, yeah. yeah. We'll let it go into Sam, but he's, he's, uh. He's badass. He's not country right. club, bro. No, 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 no. Looks like it. Right. Acts like it, dresses like it. He's not. Yeah. Then a- after Sam and Mardi Gras, we got the, uh, for all you young listeners out there, uh, St. Patrick's Day is the piss and shit event <laughs> and the puke. But before Deadwood. then, we do have snow cross. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right, because yeah. because the got, snow wasn't got here. Re, yeah, right. got rescheduled. So, so. snow cross, uh, just for people out there that are listening, it is a professional motocross championship race yep. these yes. guys have yep. points they're big time leaders yep. uh in nascar this would be the smallest course yeah. and it's like racing at bristol for your nascar yeah fans. you it's, you, a it's crazy bowl, very small bowl there's a couple jumps but you can't really jump no you gotta learn how to hit the front and the back to drop it and get around yep. because yes. it's a short track uh, yep. to give you an idea real quick about that i went to one of the preliminaries right when they're just got done oh, getting yeah. the field set together right tractor done went up and made the moguls and made the jumps and they tested they had a guy come out just to run it right <laughs> he shot the first jump went clean over outside the rodeo grounds and landed in the <laughs> damn parking lot and he's like i Holy think that's a little shit. bit too much juice and we need to lower that ramp just yeah. a wee bit <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> i'm like okay what was so, the what was that dude's name he won it like 15 uh, years in a row I can't remember and then name. yeah he won like he hated yeah. the course but he always won Right. Yeah, he well, was. Also, it's a super exciting little. I mean, especially when it's that little and yeah. making them maneuver 
Like they're putting every single yeah. bit of effort and their their knowledge into that getting around that course. You got ten, and, twelve guys out there racing around this little right. itty course. It's literally a one lane course. Yeah, and you know, it's not it's, like it's, snowmobiles are small vehicles. No, either. it gets it gets pretty intense. Yeah, and you have to admit, Tony, mm. being a vet. It's pretty cool that even though I wasn't in the chair force no. that they sponsored. Yes, they they yeah, sponsored. Right, Air so. Force sponsored, yep. and you will find that on ESPN. Yep. yep. Oh, nice. It, will it, is, be. it is. If you didn't know that, I it did will not be. know that. Yep. Yep. That's crazy, and that's so. the fourth and fifth of March. Yeah. And yeah then, that, that's why I kept saying fourth and fifth. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, knew there was an event. Mardi Gras. Before we get jump ahead, Mardi Gras on uh, Saturday. It's at seven p.m. Is the parade. Oh, so, yeah. That's that's not only right. that, most of the places have Cajun food for free, They're like little sampler dishes yep, you can yep. have. Nice. So you can walk around to the different restaurants and places, sample little uh, Cajun food stuff. And then at 7 on Saturday, the last couple of years it's been colder than crap. So they drive by about 40 and throw 10,000-plus beads out at you, so there's beads everywhere. Oh, so yeah, so then you run back inside. Yeah, now, then you run back inside. Now, for those people that don't know what it's actually like, right, you have to have a clan, 30, mm. 40 people in your clan. And when you sign up as a clan, that's on St. Patty's or, Day. Sorry, yeah, yeah that's what we're yeah. talking about, right? Well, well, yeah. I, I jumped up to St. Patty's Day now. Right. That's yeah. what I'm talking okay. about. Okay, got it. Is is the clans yeah. on that day. Yep. And the crazy thing is, because of COVID, things changed, but now we're back to the original format, which mm-hmm. is, if you have a clan, you get 30 minutes at a stop, and then you got to move. Yep. So it's a constant rotation of 30 to 40 people. Yes. Right? <clears throat> All day in your store buying. And then because we have the live music, Yes. They come back at 8 o'clock, right. and that's where everything just gets chaotic. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's all hands on deck all day. Oh, yep. yes. Smoky, crazy, yep. fun, uh, young, old, some drunk, some more drunk, and yes. some more drunk. Yeah. Yeah, some absolutely can't even walk or talk like, or see. They party or... so hard early. Yeah. They go to bed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, and then Saturday is the right. big culmination, too, because yeah. half of them have the brain to be like, all right, we're going to take it easy on Friday, and then we're going to get fucked up by 2 o'clock on Saturday. So it's, oh, it's, it's a, horrible. Oh, yeah. man. But I love it, though, because it's yeah, kind oh, of Oh, for sure. It's, 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 admit. It can be fun. But Especially when it's, like, warm out. It is my mm. worst holiday of all of them, though. I despise St. Paddy's Day just because of the fact we're barred, On like, number side? eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. So by the time they get to us, they're like, oh. Uh, yeah, and you're well. like, dude, how about you have a blue dolphin and some peanuts? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever. No. It's, and it's open container, so they're yeah. just walking around. Yeah. Beer, blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's crazy. It's, I it's, mean, it's very crazy. It is a good time, and, and it's... Isn't That's it like the younger the crowd? The second, it's not the first, I know that, but it's like the second, third, or f- it might be the third or fourth biggest. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, it's up there. Oh, it's huge, yeah. I mean, it, like if you stand on one of the top of the buildings and look down the street, it just looks like a bunch oh, of yeah. little shamrocks. Well, yeah, walking. because yeah. They, they have Main green. Street blocked up, don't they? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they got the parade too. So yeah. they have the parade that's at noon on the Saturday of that. So that's a pretty big parade. That's actually, you know, a good 10, 15, 20 minutes. It's not like the Mardi Gras where it's five floats and they're hauling ass no. because it's cold. They want to get inside. <laughs> yeah, St. Patrick's Day, more, they make yeah. floats. And oh, all yeah. 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 So and it doesn't matter how thing. cold it is. They're going to do it. Yeah, they yep. do. Yep. That's it. Man. Not much, man. And I just we wanted to make sure everybody uh, tuning in knows that you can order all of the cigars. If you want to go to DeadwoodTobacco.com, we have all of our cigars online there. Whatever we have in stock should be available for sending out from Diana, the shipping bitch, Consuela. Hey, let's try something here real quick. Let's go. So <laughs> let's let's see who listens to this podcast. Let's try something, all right? Okay. So 605-722-1510 is the number yes. to the shipping department. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that hears this, please call. Please call 605-722-1510 and just ask for Diana to say hello. Uh, That's it. You just want to yeah. say hello to the shipping lady. There you go. And She'll if you it. do this, we will have... Way more material than we ever needed. <laughs> yes. So please, 605-722-1510. Ask for Diana. And just say hi. Just say hi for she'll us. She'll freak out. She won't know why it's happening. Oh, right. it's going to be She'll, she'll yeah. be a nervous wreck, but it, <laughs> we will laugh. It's a good we'll, train We'll right? tell her after after about five to ten phone calls. Right. right. But just if it's busy, hang up, try it again. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And we will tell you what happened if you do this. Yes. It'll be on the next cast. So if you do have questions or anything that we discussed tonight, I mean, we take it lightheartedly. We're not not all serious like, you know, this is exactly how you cut a cigar and this is how you put it out. Yes. Da, 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 da. We're nah, not, we're that, not like that's that. That's been done before. Yeah, we, we, we've seen that. Everybody does that. 
Um, so what I want you to do is if you have questions uh, when this does get posted, um, put them on there. We will get back to you and we'll answer your questions. We'll yeah. try to help you out best we can and then steer you in the right direction for what you might be looking for in a cigar. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can also comment on our Facebook feed. You can also comment on Podbean where this is uh, located at. Uh, we are getting more and more mediums to make it Twitter, easier. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Well, we can do Twitter too. Pinterest, um, Pinterest. <laughs> we're doing far more mediums, so you should be able to find our podcast anywhere, not just through Podbean. Whatever your uh, favorite podcast thing is should be able to find us on there uh, we also have a uh, email so if you have any questions for the Deadwood Tobacco Company Blow and Smoke Podcast please email us at DTC uh, Blow and Smoke Podcast at gmail.com fucking A I just that's a mouthful wow that. yeah one anyways, more time yeah so DTC Blowing without the G Smoke podcast at gmail.com you can give uh, any any questions or any uh, comments or anything that you want us to cover on the podcast we'd love to hear from you thank you guys so much for tuning in until next time peace chase the dragon chase the dragon mm, dragons <laughs>